due to my earlier videos on Plasma, there are some people out there that think, I hate Plasma. I don't think people should use it. I think it's a terrible environment. And this couldn't be further from the truth. If I hated Plasma, I wouldn't still be using it. The reason why I am so critical in all my videos is because I think it is a good environment, but I think it's a good environment that has a lot of rough edges. And I would love to see those rough edges actually get ironed out. But I feel like there are some people out there that are very light-handed with KDE. They've been using it a long time. They don't want to talk about the bad parts because maybe the bad parts will make some people not want to use it. Or maybe they just don't even notice the bad parts because they've been using it so long. They are just used to that being part of the workflow. I would like to see Plasma get even better. I think it is a much better experience than GNOME, but it could be even better. So today, I want to talk about some parts of Plasma that I think are incredible. The first thing being widgets. Now, I have spoken to multiple KD developers who have told me that they don't actually use widgets on their system, and they really don't get why some people are such a big fan of them. And I am one of those big fans. So just to follow along with the terminology, a panel is the actual bar itself. A widget is those icons you see inside of the panel that have various forms of functionality. Whether it be a calendar, whether it be the application menu, whether it be a clock, or any of the other widgets. Say we have this panel at the top right here. I can go and drag this over on this side. I can go and move this over here. I can move the system tray over here. I can get rid of the application launcher. I don't need to modify this in some confusingly laid out config file. It's just all right there, easily graphically controlled. I like being able to go and modify a config file by hand. I will never want that to go away. However, there are many times where I really wish I could just modify something having a nice graphical interface, and this is one of those cases. But the really good thing about these widgets is they don't just have to be in a panel. If I go into edit mode and I click add widget, so I want to add something like this analog clock, I can just put this on my desktop. There's not a specific location it has to go in. It doesn't have to be up here or has to be down here. I can put it wherever. I can resize it as much as I want. This, I think, is really cool. You might think, oh, it's just a clock. Like, what's the big deal about that? Oftentimes, I like to have my panel be hidden, but I will have a clock appear on my second monitor, so I can always have a clock visible. That's very easy to do. Let's say, for example, your calendar is incredibly important to your workflow. You can add the calendar widget and make it take up your entire desktop, so every time you go to your desktop, it's just right there. If you want to have as much functionality as is physically possible, covering your entire desktop with widgets, where it makes it really difficult to find what each of the widgets actually do, you can go and do that as well. This system has a lot of control, and this is without even adding additional widgets that you can download as well, many of which might be incredibly useful. Another massive thing for me is properly supporting legacy applications. As we move into a more and more Wayland world, we quickly realize that there are a lot of protocols not being properly dealt with yet, a lot of problems that still need to be resolved. And Plasma doesn't do a perfect job at bridging the gap, but it certainly does a lot better of a job than some other desktops. First is the handling of global shortcuts. If you go into your settings menu and search for legacy X11 app support, you will find this setting right here. Traditionally under X11, hotkeys will work no matter what the window focus is like. On Wayland though, you can only use a hotkey if the window is currently in focus. So on OBS, I like to do things where I change my scenes using my hotkeys. If I press F5, we go to this. If I press F4, we go here, F3, go here, F2, F1, F5, back to F4. If I was running OBS through Wayland, I would only be able to run those if my mouse is currently over the OBS window. 
That is obviously very inconvenient when I'm trying to show off things like this. What this lets me do, along with running OBS through X Wayland, is control the kind of keys that are being sent to my X11 applications. This solution is not as powerful as the Hyperland solution where you can select the individual keys you want sent to the individual applications, but it's still good enough. So by default, it is set to never. So when you press a hotkey, it is never going to be sent to an X11 application. Only non-character keys. So only things like the F keys, like home, insert, print screen, those will be sent to X11 applications. As above, plus any typed while the control, alt, or meta keys are pressed. So any non-character keys alongside using modifier keys. So meta, F4, shift, F6, things like that. Or what I set it to, always, which just sends everything through because... As I said, I think the Hyperland solution is better here, but this still does what I need to make OBS actually function. Another really cool tool is the X Wayland Video Bridge. A lot of video applications still don't support the screen sharing portal on Wayland, but they do support a webcam. So, what if you maybe had a fake webcam that linked to a portal to capture your desktop. And that is what the video bridge actually does. So basically when you're running it, it will respond when it notices it is being captured. And when it is being captured, it will then prompt you to go and select what you want to capture doing a screen share. It's not a perfect solution. Sometimes it can be a little bit wonky, but it is much better than simply not being able to screen share. If you want to go into the technical details of how it functions, there is a blog post written by David Edmondson. I'll leave a link in the description down below. But legacy support isn't the end goal. It is just a bridge to make sure things are working for the user whilst a proper long-term solution is being worked on. And in many ways, KDE is the leader of getting Wayland protocols implemented. Now, obviously, WL Roots does a lot of work in this regard as well. But WL Roots is just a library and how the protocols get used in the different compositors that make use of WL Roots is very hit and miss and really depends on the project. Hyperland obviously does a great job here, but a lot of the other projects are considerably smaller and have a lot less development effort behind them, so may end up lagging behind. What I'm trying to say here is KDE does a much better job at getting protocols implemented than is done on the GNOME project. Here is a couple of examples. The top level drag protocol. This is coming out of the Chromium project and basically is a better way to handle tab drag. And if you want to know the full details, check out the video for that. And whilst it has been acknowledged by the GNOME project, I don't believe they have an implementation that is being worked on. But KDE, on the other hand, absolutely does. Then we have things like the tearing updates protocol. Now, to be fair, initially, Everybody was kind of arguing about whether or not this is a good idea. But the guy who initially started working on it is a big KDE contributor. Also, KDE has it implemented whilst GNOME is still working on the implementation. Which is the same reason why KDE has variable refresh rate support, but GNOME doesn't because GNOME is waiting on their tearing support to be implemented to implement their variable refresh rate support. So... They're kind of like stuck getting both those pieces of work done. And there are things like XDG decorations for server-side decorations. GNOME has zero interest in doing server-side decorations, only focusing on client-side with developers going so far as arguing that server-side decorations are not part of the Wayland protocol spec, which hasn't been true for many, many years. And of course, my favorite, DRM leasing, which is the reason why VR headsets don't work on GNOME Wayland. This one goes so far that in Valve's documentation for how to work around this problem, their suggestion is install KDE. Now, depending on your use case, another really cool thing is that KDE in many ways is modular to a fault. For example, Monitor configuration is in a separate package. About this system is in a separate package. And these might seem like weird things to be in a separate package. These should be core parts of the Plasma experience. And I do think they probably should be. However, 
Because they are not, let's say you have a system that only ever has one monitor plugged in. You don't really need monitor configuration, that's one less package you need to have. Or let's say you're trying to ship a really lightweight system, and you want to get rid of all of the Plasma functionality that you don't need in that environment. Well, you can just strip out a lot of the core functionality of Plasma, and yeah, it might error out if you try to access things that don't have the package installed for it, but if you're in a situation where that thing is never going to be accessed, you just don't need to have that thing shipped. Where this is really evident is when you're using a KDE application outside of KDE. When you install something like Caden Live, this pulls in 50 dependencies. Now, not all of these are KDE library dependencies, but the majority of them are. Now, some might say, well, KDE's really bloated. Why does it pull in so many packages? It's actually not bloated. It is the opposite. You don't want it to do what it was doing in the past. In the past, there weren't all of these KDE libraries. They were one giant package. So if you wanted to install one KDE application, you would install a 500 megabyte library package. That's not great. Or you can install 50 little packages that only have the things you need. Personally, I think that is much, much better. Some people are way too focused on the number of packages they have installed without focusing on the content of those packages. Sometimes, more packages might actually be less on your system. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how KDE handles window rules. Now, window rules are by no means a new concept. Basically, every desktop under the sun has window rules. However, I do really like the approach that Plasma has for actually setting them. So I'm used to the window manager approach where you will run some command to find out the name of a window. You will check the documentation for the window manager or compositor and it will list out all the different settings that you can set. You will then write a config file which in some cases might be confusingly laid out and the config format might be a mess and you'll get it working eventually but it can be kind of tedious. That is not the way that Plasma does it. Let us say, for example, that I have this terminal right here, and I want it to be, I don't know, I want it to spawn right here, for example, not window snapping to the edge. My uh, window snapping is a little aggressive. Uh, I want it to be right there. Well, I can go into my window rules. I can click add new rule. Now, Typically, with most things, this is how it would look. It just wouldn't be a graphical interface. You would write a description, you would set a window class to match on, and then you would go and add some properties. But we also have this detect window property button. This is what I'm talking about that makes it really easy. If we click on this, and then click on this window, it is going to list out all of the properties of the window. Let's select the window class. Let's select the position. And let's select the size. Let's apply that rule. Okay. Now, let's close that window. Spawn another one. Spawns right there. Let's move it over here. Let's resize it to make sure it's not just remembering its location. Close it again. Spawns right there. This makes setting a window rule very, very easy and makes it a five second process. So instead of having to worry about some other weird format for setting up the window rules, you are using your regular window workflow to set up the window the way you want it and then just basically save the state of that window and go back to it whenever you want to. That is really cool. And I'd love to see tools like that for other desktops as well. So once again, I don't hate Plasma. I think Plasma is great. I think a lot of what it can do is really, really good. But I do think there are things that can be improved, and thankfully, the devs that I am talking to in many ways do agree that there are things that can be improved. They may not agree with the specific points that I bring up, but none of them think that Plasma is in a perfect state, so I'm going to keep talking about things that I think should be improved, so if you want to hear it, I guess stick around. Anyway. If you liked the video, go like the video and let me know what you like about Plasma in the comment section down below. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and...
I'm going to do a Plutonium video soon. Don't worry about it.